Greetings everyone, this is Pastor Terence and today I am bringing the Wednesday word for Pastor Wes Johnson, our lead pastor. Now last week we touched on a topic of prayer and we established that prayer is something that all Christians should be doing or all people who are call on the name of the Lord should be doing. Now the topic of prayer, we reviewed several points. We looked at what is prayer and defined it as a form of communication with a higher power or a supernatural being, which we term it as God. Prayer can be personal or communal. In Christianity, prayers are a way to develop personal relationship with God. It is seen also as a two-way communication. We make a request to God, and in turn, God speaking to us. Now, God summons us to seek Him, to converse with Him, and in return, He intends for us to hear Him. We have examples of prayer of the prophets of the Old Testament, where we talk about Moses and Elisha, Elijah, and some of the other people in the Old Testament, Sarah, Sarah's handmaids, Elijah's servants. And then we come all the way down to the New Testament, where we have the prayers of Peter, Paul, and John. Now, prayer is established as an ancient landmark and is one activity that is effective in the midst of fear, grief, and impossible circumstances. When we talk about the impossible circumstances, we can mention just in reference the prayers of Hannah, who was in dire need of a child, and she let her request be made known unto God. Today, we want to look at some types of prayers in the Bible. Now, in building or construction projects, a foundation has to be laid. The deeper the foundation, the sturdier the building, or the higher the building can go. In extreme cases, like the hurricane that we were experiencing, or the people in Florida were experiencing today, the foundations would be tested by the strong winds and the powerful waves that are coming up out of the ocean. In prayer, the foundation is faith. I want to jump a little bit into faith and talk a little bit more about faith before we got, get into the types of prayer that people encounter. Now, in Hebrews 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6, it states, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. It simply means that a relationship with God requires a belief in his existence and trust in his promises, which is the essence of faith, trusting in his promises and, and on his word. Faith acts as the foundation for the relationship with God, allowing one to approach him with trust and confidence. Simply believing in God is not enough. It also entails believing that he is actively involved in one's life and will reward the sincere seeker. Yes, faith is considered a requirement to pleasing God. It is essential and living by faith and trusting God with your life will please God. Jesus, in teaching the lesson of the withered fig tree as found in Mark 11, 
verses 20 through 26, demonstrates that faith is the key that, rele that releases the resources of heaven into our situation. He tells the astonished disciples, have faith in God. Whenever things, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. Now, faith could be defined as an extension of our conviction, our confidence, our trust, and our belief and reliance that God will supply the answer. You know, when we're going to visit a medical doctor and we share this information with our friends or someone close to us, they may ask, well, what type of doctor are you visiting? You can go to the ear and nose doctor. You could go to the oncologist. You can go, people may be going to see a gynecologist. There are different types of doctors. They specialize in their field in a like manner. When we are going to God, the creator of everything, he wants us to be specific in the prayers, requests that we are making to him. Now, he is the God and creator of all things who answers all our prayers. And he would like to know specifically what you are asking him about. In praying, they have different types of prayers. There's the prayer of faith. There's the prayer, a corporate prayer. There's the prayer of agreement. The prayer of request and supplication. The prayer of thanksgiving. And the prayer of worship, just to mention a few. In the prayer of faith, it's a prayer that expresses faith in God and may ask for guidance, strength, or healing. The list could be continuous. Psalms 25, David says, In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Prayer of faith. No, I don't want my enemies triumphing over me, dear God. So I put my trust and confidence in you. James 5.15 states, And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. In this context, prayer is offered in faith for someone who is sick, asking God to heal. When we pray, we are to believe in the power and the goodness of God, that God answers. In Mark chapter 9, verses 21 through 25, it talks about faith as a prayer that reaches through, consciously touches God's throne, and then rests unshakably in the assurance that the answer will come when in God's time, not when we want it, but to the time that God wants to answer it. We can also look at the Psalmist David in Psalms 124, where he declares that faith is our weapon and God is our companion. Faith is our weapon and God is our companion. David declares if the Lord had not been on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. We can go back to the Old Testament times when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt. It says God was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He protected the Israelites as they leave Egypt. When they cross the river, he was the wall that held the waters back so that they can cross over. Hadn't it been for him, 
they would not have been able to cross. Faith. Look at the centurion. As recorded in Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. He declared that Jesus just say the word. Say the word that my servant be healed. Now he went on in detail to say that he also is a man of authority. And when he gives his servants orders, they carry, them, carry it out. And he does not think that he is even worthy to be in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus was not even, Jesus does not. Or could not, of course, he doesn't want Jesus, he, he thinks it's below Jesus to come into his home. But he asks Jesus just to say the word so that his servant can be healed. The servant was healed, and Jesus, who was marveled by it, says, I have not seen such faith in all Israel. Just imagine it. Faith, just say the word. You don't have to come, you just say the word and let my servant be healed. Now, as we delve into the types of prayer, we want to look at the prayer of agreement. And this is also known as the corporate prayer. So after Jesus' ascension, the disciples all joined together constantly in prayer in one accord, as recorded in Acts chapter 1 and verse 14. And later, after Pentecost, the early church devoted themselves to prayer. Now, their example encourages us to pray with others. We can have solo prayers where we pray by ourselves, or we can have prayers where we pray with others. We have the prayer of request or supplication. We are to take our request to God, as Philippians 4, 6 teaches us. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything, yes, everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Take everything to God in prayer. It's a part of winning the spiritual battle that we are encountering today is by praying at all times. Pray at all times in the Spirit, and with all prayer and supplication. The Bible also teaches us that we must pray without ceasing. And one of the things that we can do or orchestrate in praying without ceasing is by singing the Psalms. That's a form where we can be praying and talking to God. We do not always have to be asking. We can be worshiping and we can be glorifying him. You may worship is a part of praying and glorifying God. We have the prayer of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming up in the next couple of weeks. And this type of thanksgiving, we give thanks to God. And so with thanksgiving, as recorded in Philippians 4 and verse 6, he says, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And there are many examples of thanksgiving prayer as can be found in Psalms, just to mention a few. Psalms 100, Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, and Psalms 95. Now we have the prayer of worship. And the prayer of worship is similar to the prayer of thanksgiving. The difference is that worship focuses on who God is. Thanksgiving focuses on what God has done. Now the church leaders in Antioch prayed in this manner with fasting as well. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said to them, Set apart for me. Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. And that's where Paul and Barnabas went on different missionary journeys. In conclusion, prayer is the Christian way of communicating with God. 
we praise or we pray to praise God and thank Him to tell Him how much we love Him. We pray to enjoy His presence and tell Him what is going on in our lives. We pray to make requests and seek guidance and ask for wisdom. God loves this exchange with His children just as we love the exchange we have with our children. Fellowship with God is the heart of prayer. Too often we lose sight of how simple prayer is and it is supposed to be very simple. As I've said before, if we can talk or communicate with someone, we can pray to God. Many of these words, may these words of encouragement on prayer take root and help us along the way to become better followers in performing the kingdom work that Christ has called us to. May the Lord bless and keep you until we meet again. Amen.